Um, ask yourselves, what is wrong with spending eternity in hell? Well, I'm told it's rather hot there, for one. The whole point of Christianity, or so it is imagined, is to safeguard the eternal well-being of human souls. Okay, picture picture a, a, an Asian tsunami of the sort we saw in 2004 that killed a quarter of a million people. One of those every 10 days, killing children only under five. Okay, it's 20, 24,000 children a day, 1,000 an hour, 17 or so a minute. That means before I can get to the end of this sentence, some few children, very likely, will have died in terror and agony. Okay, think, think of the parents of these children. Think of the fact that, that most of these men and women believe in God and are praying at this moment for their children to be spared, and their prayers will not be answered. Okay, but according to Dr. Craig, this is all part of God's plan. Any God who would allow children by the millions to suffer and die in this way, and their parents to grieve in this way, either can do nothing to help them, or doesn't care to. He is therefore either impotent or evil. And worse than that, on Dr. Craig's view, most of these people, many of these people certainly, will be going to hell because they're praying to the wrong God. Just think about that. Okay, through no fault of their own, they were born into the wrong culture where they got the wrong theology and they missed the revelation. Okay, there, there are 1.2 billion people in India at this moment. Most of them are Hindus, most of them therefore polytheists. Okay, in Dr. Craig's universe, no matter how good these people are, they are doomed. If you are, if you are praying to the monkey god Hanuman, you are doomed. Okay. You will be tortured in hell for eternity. Now, is there the slightest evidence for this? No. It just says so in Mark 9 and Matthew 13 and Revelation 14. Okay. So God created the cultural isolation of the Hindus. Okay. He engineered the circumstance of their deaths in ignorance of Revelation. And then he created the penalty for this ignorance, which is an eternity of conscious torment in fire. Okay. On the other hand, on Dr. Craig's account, your run-of-the-mill serial killer in America... Okay, who, who spent his life raping and torturing children, need only come to God, come to Jesus on death row, and after a final meal of fried chicken, he's going to spend an eternity in heaven after death. Okay, one thing should be crystal clear to you. This vision of life has absolutely nothing to do with moral accountability. Now, you're all aware, of course, that the Quran exists and claims to be the perfect word of the creator of the universe. You're aware that once having heard of this possibility and rejecting it, you're all going to hell for eternity. I mean, needless to say, Dr. Craig and I are both going to hell if this vision of life is true. The problem is that everything Dr. Craig has said tonight, with a few modifications, could be said in defense of Islam, in fact, has been said in defense of Islam. Okay, the logic is exactly the same. We have a book that claims to be the word of the creator of the universe. It tells us about the nature of moral reality and how to live within it. But what if, what if Muslims are right? And what if Islam is true? Okay, how should we view God in moral terms? How would we view God in moral terms? Or I should say Allah. Okay, we, we have been born in the wrong place to the wrong parents, given the wrong culture, given the wrong theology. Okay, needless to say, Dr. Craig is doomed. He's been thoroughly confused by Christianity. I mean, just appreciate what a bad position he's now in to appreciate the true word of God. I've been thoroughly misled by science. Okay, where is Allah's compassion? Okay. And yet, in it, it, he's, omni he's omnipotent. He could change this in an instant. He could give us a sign that would convince everyone in this room. And yet he's not going to do it. And hell awaits.
and hell awaits our children because we can't help but mislead our children. Okay, now just hold this vision in mind and, and first appreciate how little sleep you have lost over this possibility. Okay, just feel in yourself at this moment how carefree you are and will continue to be in the face of this possibility. What are the chances that we're all going to go to hell for, for eternity because we haven't recognized the Quran to be the perfect word of the creator of the universe? Please know that this is exactly how Christianity appears to someone who's not been indoctrinated by it. 